with you. We gather this morning around a table that has already been set, a table that an invitation was made a long time ago for us to come and gather around. But we were gathered here because Jesus Christ has done something in our lives and is doing something in the world. So as we now gather together, as we gather in the space of worship, the invitation is this, that we lay aside everything that would encumber us, everything that would distract us, and everything that gives us an identity other than we are Jesus's people. Um, the message today, all the way through the service that we're going to hear is, listen to the big picture. Don't get lost in the weeds. Understand where we are in the cosmic story of what God is doing among us and through us and within us. So as we move into that place, I do want to say a word of celebration. It's my understanding that the... Um, some of the smaller show choirs. Who made that announcement today? What was the announcement? It is Brandon Middle and High School show choirs. Brandon Middle and High School are getting the best marks. And Jared, you said that the high school hasn't yet been. They had their final today. So we pray for them, we pray for all the families involved, and we pray for their traveling as they do this, but we celebrate with our community with a bunch of kids who've been practicing really hard and their parents that would normally sit about right there and they're absent from us. So we do remember all of them, all of those of us who are traveling who are not here. Um, that is though why we provide our Crossgates at Home, our online ministry, so that they can continue to participate. So whether you're here now or Crossgates at Home, come together now in the name of Jesus Christ, gather in his life, gather in his teachings, but gather in the story in which he is grafting us all into. Let us now turn our hearts and minds to worship by first standing and singing our hymn of praise, Guide me thou, O great Jehovah. Let's stand and offer our praise to God. Please join me in responsive psalm reading, Psalms 112, 1 through 10. Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who gratefully delight in the Lord's commandments. Wealth and riches are in the house, and their righteousness endures forever. They are gracious, merciful, 
It is well with those who deal generously and lend who conduct their affairs with justice. When they see their adversaries, their hearts are steady. They will not be afraid. When they see their adversaries, oh. their hearts are steady. They will not be afraid. They will be distributed freely. They have given to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn is exalted in honor. The wicked see it and are angry. They gnash their teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked comes to nothing. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading comes from Isaiah chapter 58, verses 1 through 12. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if there were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask, me, they ask of me righteous judgment. They delight or draw near to God. Why do we fast but do not see? Why humble ourselves but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike out with a wicked fist. Such fasting you do daily will not make your voice heard on high. Is such this fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush and lie on a sackcloth and ashes? Why you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this... Is not this the fast that I choose to lose the bounds of injustice? I undo the thongs of the yoke and let the oppressed go free. And to break every yoke? Is this not to share your bread with the hungry and to bring your homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, you cover them and not hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break, like, break forth like the dawn and your healing should, break, should spring up quickly. Your vindicator should go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then the Lord, then shall call, the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and the Lord will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger and the spreading of evil, if you offer food to the hungry and satisfy needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord shall guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose water never fails. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt, and you shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach and the restorer of the streets to live on. The New Testament reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 16. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words of wisdom. For I decided to know nothing about you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I came to you in the weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and proclamations were not with plausible words of wisdom, but with a demonstration of the spirit of the powers, so that your faith may rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature we do speak wisdom, though it's not a wisdom of this age or of rulers of this age, we are doomed to perish." But we speak of God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed before the ages of our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for, they, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, what has no, eyes has not, what has no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, nor the human heart conceived, when God has prepared for those who love him, those things God revealed to us through the spirit of the to the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within. So, no, so also no one comprehends what is truly God's except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed to us by God. And we speak, to those, and we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, 
but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. Those who are, un, who, those who are unspiritual do not receive the gifts of God's Spirit, for they are foolish to them, and they are unable to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Those who are spiritually discerned all things, and those who are themselves subject to no one else's scrutiny. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thank you, Ross, for reminding us of something, that this table is just an ordinary table unless we encounter it in the mind of Christ, with the mind of Christ. And what that means is we need God to give us light and to help us understand that it is Christ, our Lord, who invites to his table all who love him. That's you. That's me. The AM, even though our love falls short, we're all invited, those who love him and who earnestly repent of their sin. And who seek to live at peace with one another. This is the mind of Christ. To turn this table into something other than a table. To be more than a symbol. To be a reality. The true reality. That what sin attempted to undo, Jesus confronted with his body, with his blood, and made it right. Let's pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. There it is. A confession, a truthful confession. And what follows that is good news. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And that proves God's love towards us. And hearing it once again. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. For a moment, let's pause together offering our prayers, offering out of our hearts. We've already mentioned our joy that we have to celebrate what our students and their families have been able to accomplish. But I do ask us to pray for them that they would not drift so far away from their Christian home, their Christian community. That maybe what some of us need to do is take that community to them. It's a challenge I just want to lay before you spontaneously. We don't need to wait for people to come. Pray that you will be the one to go to them. We also pray for those among us who are sick, for those who are hurting, for all who find themselves today in the darkness of depression. Specifically with that, I had news this morning, and I don't know if I can share it openly, but one of our bishop's daughters... Um, is really in a bad state. And we were asked to pray for, I'll tell you a first name, Sissy. If we could pray for Sissy. Because the darkness creeps in, doesn't it? Doesn't it? So I think that we can pray for Sissy and all the others. We can pray for all those who hurt, all those who are lonely, all those that we just confess that we haven't loved. So Crossgates, I invite us now to make an offering our prayer. Let's pray together. Oh God, your people are bold to come before you because you ask us to. But we find you high and lifted up. We find the thunder and the lightning and the brightness and the glory scary. Should we be here? Are we capable of encountering this? 
Oh God, you've reminded us already that you have made the way, you have cleared the path. You have been the one to come to us in Jesus Christ. So God, we give you thanks. We're humbled and overjoyed. So in our hearts, we have before you offerings of who we are, of our thinking, of our loving, of our holding. So God, we gather together and name these names in our hearts, the brokenness in our families, the hurt in our nation, the confusion in our minds. And we know that you can take these things and transform them into your glory, into your purpose. And give us hope that you are not done, that you are indeed just getting started. So God, then your people stand here hoping to hear you sing over us, hoping that you will lead us, hoping that we will leave here transformed. It is in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray, amen. As the people who make these kind of offerings to God, we offer something else. I explain it different ways all the time. I'm explain it again. We follow Jesus. We don't just worship God. We worship the father of Jesus Christ. Jesus taught us that if we stand and have anything to offer and there is a breach between us and someone, God does not want that offering. What he wants is reconciliation. What he wants is peace. That doesn't mean that right now we have to go and fix everything, but it is a practice where we get up and we pass peace of Jesus. We don't pass our own peace. We don't say, hi, I love you. We say, Jesus loves you. Before we do anything else then, let's do what Jesus taught us to do. Get up right now, find someone and share with them the peace of Christ, let that be your offering. And if you then have a financial gift to offer, know that God doesn't need your money, but we need to give because we're being transformed into the image of God in Christ. We're becoming generous and we don't withhold. We offer and we join and we give. So Cross Kate's now, right now, let's go practice that kind of peace and that kind of generosity. Let's go do that real quick.
stand back up. <laughs> it's okay. Y'all were so, so excited you needed to take a nap. That's okay. I understand. Because the gospel is so important to us, let's stand together and pay attention. We do stand not only as a sign of honor, but any time that Jesus talks, any time that Jesus wants to make something clear to us, we stand up. So here now, the gospel of Matthew, this is uh, 13 through 20 out of chapter 5. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste... How can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but it is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works And give glory to your Father in heaven. Don't think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fill them full. Fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. You may be seated. So many of you last week sent me, it was a Sunday evening, okay, I think you were the first one sent me the TV guide, and there was a 50th anniversary of the Schoolhouse Rock. I want you all to know that I really had no idea that when I broke out in all the the tunes of Schoolhouse Rock, I had no idea. I really didn't. I'm going to take advantage of it, though. Because there was a bigger picture for Schoolhouse Rock. We talked about it. All those little ditties, all those songs were designed to remind us of something bigger. Whether it was singing about American history and who we are as a bigger people, whether it was about math and how numbers can actually be our friends, or whether it was grammar so that we can understand how to communicate better, there's a bigger picture. A much larger picture than even one little song, but it brought us back into it. And that is what got me thinking today. That is what got me thinking that he's just getting started, Jesus. He's just getting started. Last week, we called the Beatitudes, the beginning of his Sermon on the Mount, as the preamble to the kingdom. This kingdom is hard for us to understand. I've struggled to come up with a word that helps us understand because we don't have a king. We don't live under a king. But if I were to say that The democracy of God is at hand. That wouldn't quite do it either, would it? What is it that has come? What's the biggest picture for us? What's being fulfilled? I think really what we need to say is Jesus is the jubilee that the kingdom had promised. The jubilee was this time that Every seven years, there was a small jubilee where you'd set some people free, the slaves would go free, you'd pay out, you'd get your debts forgiven, etc. But every seven times seven years, the 50th year would come and everything got a jubilee. The land got a rest. Everything got a rest. And that is what God was trying to do in that country. To bring every single one of those people and all the nations of the world into a jubilee, into a kingdom, into a way of living that is about jubilee. You're free. You can rest. You're set free to go and do the good works that you were created to do. You are the goodness that was needed in the world. You are welcome in God's family and in God's temple. It's your place, it's your home. 
So I honestly think, Crossgates, that what we're seeing here in the text this morning of you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world is Jesus is saying, do you see the big picture of what I'm trying to bring to you fully, to fulfill, to bring that full into And I want us to be confronted by that. I want us to see it. I want us to know that Jesus is the one who makes it all complete. I know that sometimes we want to come to church and we want to hear a specific lesson about a specific thing. Teach me conjunction, junction, what's your function? But sometimes we need to be reminded of the big picture. And y'all, that's where my heart is with us. Because if we approach this book and Jesus as just another rule giver. We shouldn't be here. Really, we don't need another rule giver. We need someone who's going to make those rules make sense. We need someone who's going to help us become the justice and righteousness of God. We don't need to be told again and again and again how horrible we are. We need to be told again and again and again how good we can be in him. And this is what Jesus is inaugurating. The biggest thing that you could ever imagine being caught up into, Jesus says you are part of it. So when Jesus says you are the salt of the earth, he's going straight back to what Ross read in Isaiah. He's saying we have a problem. We'll say church, but Jewish people. We have a problem, church. You're doing all the stuff. You're getting all the things right, but you're not getting the big picture. You've, you're fasting all over the place. You're doing all the, 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 the stuff. And when you fast and when you do communion, y'all just quarrel and fight with each other. Is this not the fast that I choose, Isaiah says of God, 58 verse 6. Is this not the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke. That's the foot and the shoulder, by the way. To let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and to bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then, then your light will break forth and like the dawn. And your healing, your salvation will spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. Then you'll call on the Lord. Then you'll call and the Lord will be your rear guard. And he will come and he'll answer you. And he will say, here I am. Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry to satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light will rise in the darkness and your gloom will be like the noonday. That's the jubilee of the kingdom. Jesus is saying it's here, it's now, and you are included. In fact, you are the greatest evidence of it. It's here, it's now. So when he says to them and we get to receive it to you are the salt of the earth y'all have heard me preach a little bit about salt salt had many purposes back then today it just gives us hypertension back then it did everything it preserved food y'all I think we know that you can rub salt all over something and it, it will stop decaying right it was also a medicine that you could put in a wound I still gargle with salt water when I have a sore throat works kills germs okay But salt was also used to pay people. It was so important. The word we get salary comes from the Latin word for salt. So he's saying, Jesus, call to mind the many purposes of salt. That's what you are. But what happens when salt doesn't do salt anymore? What happens when it doesn't do what salt is supposed to do? You can't even use it for manure and fertilizer. That is the implication here. You can put Epsom salt on your grass and it'll turn that sucker green. I learned that. Do it. Now, if it burns your yard, I I didn't say this. Don't go back and check that. You are the salt of the earth. You preserve it. You heal it. 
You give it value. That's who you are. He, he's pulling us back, Jesus is, back to Isaiah and back to the psalmist. He's pulling them back and he says, then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will spring forth. You are the ones to bring healing. You are the one to preserve it. That's who you are. God's jubilee kingdom is here. But let me remind you, don't get into this and then act like it's nothing. When in reality, it's everything. Because if you're not good anymore as salt, you're just going to be thrown out and trampled on. Cross gates, Jesus is telling us, telling them, go be salt. You're it. You're what the world needs. You have it. Give it. Share it. Pour it liberally. Save people. Salve people. Heal them. Be their salary. Be generous with them. This is what Jesus is saying. You are and the new kingdom in the world. He continues there and he says, you are the light of the world. That one comes to us a bit easier, but I find something interesting about the darkness. Do y'all know that there really is no such thing as darkness? It's just the absence of light. I know that sounds like the trade, no duh, but think about that. Darkness is only real if light is not present. It's not even real. It's just the absence of light. We could drop every shade, turn off every light, and all that one of us would have to do is turn on the glow function of our watch, and the darkness would scatter. The power of the light is that, and Jesus says that's what you are. That's who you are. No matter where you go, you shine so bright. If you were on a hill in a city, no one could hide you. He's calling them back. Psalm 112, praise the Lord and happy are those who fear the Lord, who delight in his commandments. Wealth and riches are in their house. They rise in the darkness as the light for the upright. They are gracious and merciful and righteous. It is well with those who deal generously and lend, who conduct their affairs with justice. They have distributed freely and they have given to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn is exalted in their honor. You are light. You cannot hide. When you shine, the darkness flees. So if you're one of those people who, when you light a lamp, you you put a basket over it and your baskets. If you put a basket over it, why? Why would you do that? You're light. That's who you are. It's not who you will be. It's not who you ought to be. Hear this again. This is who Jesus is is and inviting us to be now. The salt and the light work together. For those of you who have ever made candles, I found this very interesting. Did y'all know that you can rub salt on a wick and it makes the light brighter? Do you see the cool symbolism there? That when you are the person who's out salving the world, when you're out there giving it value, when you're out there healing it, What happens to your light? It's even brighter. People see you doing that. And Jesus says that when you do that, you let your light shine before others so that when they see this bright, sparking light, they will see those good works, that justice, that mercy, and they will give glory to you? To you? No, to the king, to the one who's doing this to this amazing work that he's doing. I could keep lingering here because I think it's so fascinating that Jesus is just getting started. But then he cautions us, he reminds us, and he brings us into a text that I honestly find a little confusing and confounding, so I want to talk to it real quick so we don't leave here thinking that Jesus came here to lift the yoke of legalism off by giving us what? a higher and oppressive weight of legalism. Jesus did not come here to take the yoke that the Pharisees and the Sadducees, that the rules were overbearing the people. He didn't come here and say, oh yeah, you think it's bad? Watch this, here's even more. That's the opposite of what he's doing, but he cautions us. 
And he says, don't think that I've come to knock all that away. Don't think I've come to destroy it. It being the law and the prophets. It being the law and the prophets refers to the Hebrew scriptures. All of it. Don't think that I've come and that's not going to make sense anymore. No, I've come to fill it up full. I've come to help it make sense. I've come to show you that what God was doing before I got here was creating a vessel. Was creating a structure. It was just a jar. But now I'm going to show you what that jar is for. I'm going to pour myself into it. I'm going to make that jar make sense. I'm going to make that... That jar of salt makes sense. I'm going to fill it up with salt. I'm going to make that light, that lamp. I'm going to make it make sense. I'm going to give it oil, and it's going to overflow, and it's going to be filled with light. Jesus says, that's why I'm here, and that's what the purpose of the scriptures were. All of them were all pointing to me. So I'm going to tell you right now, not one letter of it's going to change. Not one thing about it is going to change, but it's going to make sense. Nothing's going to change until everything is accomplished, until everything makes sense, until the whole story makes sense. So if any of you think that you can go out there and break these things and stop people from doing them, you're going to be the least. It's not cool. It's not the right thing. But it's not a legalism. We don't pick up this book and say, okay, Jesus, uh, I have not tithed um, a little bit of mint So I guess I'm a sinner, I'm horrible. Jesus actually confronted some of the Pharisees over that. You're out there worrying about the amount of herb in a jar, yet you forget what Isaiah said about your fasting. Give a rip about your fasting. I don't care about your deal and your coming. I don't care about your tithe. I don't care about anything unless you're out there being the kingdom. Where's the justice? Where's the love? Where's the mercy? Where's the healing? Where's the salve? Where's the light? That's who you are. And that's where I am. And that's what I'm bringing to fulfillment. But anyone who does these things and teaches them is going to be the greatest in this new thing that I'm doing. And then he puts his tongue in his cheek grins over at the scribes and Pharisees and says this, I tell you that unless your righteousness exceeds that of these incredibly intelligent Bible scholars and these people who keep every rule, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven because they don't get it. They just don't get it. That all the law and the prophets, all the Old Testament is about what? Love God, love neighbor. Love God, love neighbor. Nothing about that has changed, Jesus said. You are that. You go do that. You be that. You save the world through it. You light up the world with it. You go because you are now the evidence of God's kingdom in the world. Let me find a different translation of that last passage. This is Richard France. He's an Anglican pastor over in Wales. I love the way he reads verse 17 and forward. He says this, of Jesus. You see, I've not come to set aside the Old Testament, but to bring fulfillment to which it pointed. For no part of it can ever be set aside, but all must be fulfilled, as it is now being fulfilled in my ministry and teaching. So a Christian who repudiates any part of the Old Testament is an inferior Christian. The consistent Christian will be guided by the Old Testament and will teach others accordingly. But a truly Christian attitude is not the legalism of the scribes and Pharisees, but a deeper commitment to do the will of God. A deeper commitment to understand, and it's later, just the next verse, if y'all want to look at it. You've heard that it was said long ago, thou shalt not commit murder. But I say to you, if you hold anger in your heart towards someone, you're in danger of judgment. Crossgates here and Crossgates at home, you are part of a bigger picture. Don't get lost in one part of this. 
pull yourself back up to the top every time we come together to worship. Understand that these are the words of life for us, but they're fulfilled in Jesus Christ, the one who sets the table, the one who showed us the way, the one who inaugurated a new kingdom is the one who says, now you go be the light. You go be the bread for the world. You go take the message of my sacrifice to the world and you tell them that they're saved, they're salved, they're healed. Remove the yoke from them. Bring justice and light to them. This is the big picture. This is the totality of scripture. This is the kingdom of God. This is who you are. This is who I am. This is the kingdom jubilee of Jesus Christ. That is the invitation every day. It's the invitation right now, and it is ultimately the invitation to this table. Kim and church, I'm going to deviate from the liturgy that's in the, in the bulletin. Listen to the great thanksgiving. Y'all don't have to, to, to say anything in this part of it. It's, just a, it's a shorter great thanksgiving, but there's a part of it that I want us to hear. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things and called them good. In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death, and you destroyed their power forever. You raised from the dead this same Jesus, who now reigns with you in glory. And you poured upon us your Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant, your new kingdom, your new kingdom jubilee. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took a cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, the one who fulfills everything, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, the salt and light of the world in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this wine, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world, redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at your table in the kingdom jubilee forever. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As the people of a kingdom, we were taught to pray something. We were taught to pray the way the kingdom works. We were taught to pray to the king. So now as children of God, I invite us to pause for a minute and pray that prayer and listen to the new reign of God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the Lord's table. This is not my table. It doesn't belong to anyone but Jesus. This bread that we're about to break is a sharing in him. His brokenness is what brings the world together. His saltiness is what makes us salty. The light of the world had come, and we become a light that can't be hidden. For those who are going to come forward and help me serve today, and Sam, if you'll come forward and help me 
attend the table. But for those who are going to help, y'all come on down, Dimple, others. This table today needs to be a reminder to us of a present reality. A present reality of the kingdom, the jubilee, the way that God works. There's plenty here. All are invited. Go ahead and do your hands. There's no one. There's no barrier. There's no one who can stop you from coming. He is here to serve you. Every one of these people here, young and old, tall and small, are here as the body of Christ to demonstrate to you how you are to go into the world to serve. As you come... They're going to tell you the good news. Y'all make sure you bless them. And you tell them that the body of Christ is broken for you. Give it to them. And the blood of Christ is poured out for them. So y'all come and receive that blessing. If y'all would let me serve them first this time. And then y'all will take your stations. Sam, if you'll help me when it's time, if you will have the prepackaged ones. So if anybody would rather receive the the prepackaged ones, Sam will be here and he will serve you in that way. table is set. The choir is coming to receive. It's now your time to come. We have ushers to help guide the way. Come and receive the life of the new kingdom, the celebration of Jubilee. Come as the salt, come as the light. Come be transformed because Jesus is the one who serves you. Let's come.
Has everyone been served who wishes to be served? You are the light of the world. You're a city on the hill that cannot be hidden. You are the salt of the earth. You make bread taste good. You're valuable. You have a purpose. You don't become it, you already are it. In the same way that when you came forward to receive, it's time for us to go and give, to go and offer. I have a challenge for you. I have a challenge for me. I really want you to at least one time this week say or do something exactly like Jesus did. I mean that. If someone's hurting, tell them they're loved and God sees them and puts them in the front of the line. If you see someone heavy laden, Tell them their burden has been relieved and their sins have been forgiven in Jesus' name. If someone thinks they're not seen, tell them that they are the light of the world. That God is empowering you to tell them that they too can be a part of the kingdom. The jubilee, the celebration where everything comes together and is filled full by God's love and God's justice and God's mercy. We leave today singing a song. We leave today putting a song in our heart and that we hold on to. It's a simple one. We know it from Boy Scout, Girl Scout, Campfire Days, you name it, whatever. Y'all know this song, and I expect your hands to go up, your fingers to be pointed, and for us to sing this song of joy and blessing, but more importantly, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Shine, shine, shine everywhere I go, because I am the light of the world, and I am the salt of the earth. Cross gates, let's stand together and let's sing that song as our sending song. because the light of the world is the light that you have. Y'all keep going. I want you to show them how fast we need to go. This is how we go. Our light shining, our salt pouring off of us in a good way. But we go now cross gates. We go as the light of the world. It's dark. Come on, let's go.